Hello, this is Alex Kolosko and welcome to introductory lesson on this course, course about wine photography. Uh, in this lesson I'm going to talk about uh, everything that we used for the course, so you know what kind of gear uh, you may need. And on the second part of uh, this lesson I'm going to tell about the preparation, preparation for the uh, bottles, uh, how to make sure that they will look nice <laughs> on your shot as well as uh, the way that we're going to set up our camera exposure and uh, how to a different type of photography. Uh, regular still life uh, as well as uh, high speed splash photography because it's part of the course. Okay, so first let's talk about camera and lens. It sits here so why not to talk. I was using this Sony a7R2 camera. This is so far I think it's the best uh, mirrorless camera. Uh, that uh, currently exists. Uh, it's 42 megapixel full frame camera and uh, well it does beautiful beautiful job in the studio. Mirrorless is small that's why I like it. It also um, let me utilize live view really good way. What I mean by this I you always shoot with the camera connected not only to the computer using USB cable. You see this connection here. It's USB connection. I also connect HDMI out. This is HDMI out. All the camera has, even DSLRs, it's not actually not uh, the, uh, only for mirrorless. But I connect the camera to a large screen, large TV that I have on a stand on the studio, a little bit on the side of the shooting area. It let me see the, the actual picture in high resolution and very large scale of what is going on in front of the camera. So when I do modification on the light, I immediately see result even before I click, before I get the picture. And of course it let me uh, way easier to find uh, where I need to position the light. Because I can see that, you know, what happens using modern light. If I turn off uh, light in the studio so it's not really bright, modern light is a great way to see what is actually going on. And I really love shooting this way with output, the video output, live view. Uh, from the camera to a large TV. So, any camera will work, okay? Just telling you about why I use Sony, why I like Sony. If you don't have Sony, if you have Nikon, if you have uh, Canon, if you have Olympus, any camera, literally any camera is good. It's not about the camera, not even about the lens, it's about the lighting. Whole course is about how to highlight your subject, how to make a nice picture using the light. Because I can easily use iPhone camera to take a pictures and it will be great pictures. Okay, as a proof you can look at the course that I have uh, for iPhone photography where I was shooting wine as well, actually without studio lighting, and you can see the results. So it's not about the camera, it's not about the lens. However, the lens is a good thing to have, <laughs> good lens. And the good lens for product photography is a macro lens. Like here I have this uh, Sony uh, FE full frame uh, 2.8 90mm G macro lens with image stabilizer. Even though image stabilizer is not uh, being used on this shot uh, because we don't need to stabilize anything, any, everything is stable already. Uh, but the lens, what macro lens gives a photographer that ability to shoot relatively close. Again, for this course you may not need to have a macro lens. But in general, if you don't have any lens or you have some, some strange lens that are not going to work well, uh, maybe like a wide-angle lens or like 35mm lens only, and you're planning to start taking pictures of products and you're thinking about buying the lens, it's always better to go with a macro lens if you're going to buy it. Because for product photography, macro lens, it's 90% of the time being used. Being used 90% of the time. <laughs> macro lens. Macro lens gives you ability to shoot really close, meaning that you can shoot jewelry, little things, uh, something that you cannot shoot with a uh, normal lens without that one-to-one -one magnification ratio. This is what macro lens does. It has mag magnification ratio one-to-one. -one. This is true macro. And if you're going to buy, better buy macro. 
However, if you have something like 50 millimeters, 100 millimeters, or anything between 150 millimeters lens, it will work well for your wine photography. Okay? You don't need to have another lens. It will work just perfectly. Anything starting from 50 millimeters and up to 200 or whatever will work well. Okay? Because you will get things on a frame where it's supposed to be. That's the magnification ratio that you have. Okay? So, it's not about the camera and the lens, but of course, good camera and good lens will give you better technical result, better resolution, better uh, image quality, and overall, you'll be more satisfied. Okay? So, that was about the camera. How I was triggering the camera? Using the least expensive Pocket Wizard Plus X, I think a pair of them uh, cost like 100 feet or 200 dollars. Don't remember. Anyway, simple triggers, very reliable. Pocket Wizards are great for this. Uh, I have exactly the same trigger on each of my Broncolor packs. So they automatically switch from being transmitter or receiver. You just put it one in the camera, one on the light. Uh, choose the same channel, like I have here, fifth channel, and voila, uh, it works. You turn it on, you see that uh, green light is blinking, meaning that uh, it exactly charged the batteries and uh, it's ready to go. So, uh, that was the camera and the lens. Let's talk about the lighting. Lighting is another thing that you may consider to buy if you don't have anything. Uh, however, there are so many options about lighting. I was using a studio lighting. The lighting that made for product photographer, sorry, for any photographer, uh, strobe lighting, meaning that it fires the strobe, uh, very short but very bright uh, impulse of light that also can stop action in my case. And uh, you need to have either strobe lighting or LED lighting. For still life photography, it doesn't matter if it's continuous lighting or strobe. Again, if it's really new, to you. If you have um, not, if you're not sure what kind of lighting to get and what the advantages, uh, I suggest you to get the course. There is level one course, uh, starting studio photography theory and uh, practice and then post-production uh, that we have on 40G. It's a great course for any product photographer to start with. If you have very little idea about your gear and uh, about uh, in general lighting techniques. Okay. However, let's go back to about lighting. This is Einstein, Pulse above Einstein, 640 watt second light. It used to be, sorry, it used to be my favorite for many years, this lighting system, uh, Pulse above, because of, especially in Einstein, I was starting from white uh, lighting and alien bees long time ago. Love the lights. But this light, this is their first digital light, meaning that you can control the color temperature, you can control flash duration with this light, and it has enough power. And it has 640 watt second, which is a lot for this little unit. For $500, this is probably one of the best if you in North America. One of the best light to go with. It has a uh, very cool uh, remote that you can control all the lights in the studio, all Einstein lights from little remote, which is a trigger itself that sits on the camera. I call it Cyber Commander. Beautiful stuff. $500 a piece. If you have only this, if you have only speed lights, I know many photographers, especially photographers that came coming from uh, on-field photography events, uh, you know, some Strubis type of portraiture, you probably have few of those. This is $60 Chinese speed light. And it can be used in product photography with a great success. I have a course, again, that course that I was mentioning, uh, starting product photography, in studio product photography. I was using three lights like this, with the strobe boxes like this, this is actually the different mount. Well, different. This is Bowen's mount. 
exactly what works with this. This is $70 strip box. This is narrow stop box, basically, uh, without a buffer, but, well, you put <laughs> the double buff if needed. I removed it for some other shot. Using only this light and only those strip boxes, you can do everything that I showed on this course. So it's all possible. It's a little bit harder because it doesn't have more than light, but in terms of getting the picture, it's all possible. If you want to learn how to use this for product photography, uh, get the course that I mentioned. Okay, and the last option, the type of light, I would say, the LED light. Okay, this is, oh, this is Godox. One mm -hmm. of the least expensive lights that has Bowen's mount, which is great. Okay. Bowen's mount and it takes the same strip box and you can use it for product photography for anything that doesn't move. Of course, not for high speed photography. Uh, what's cool about uh, lights like this, they're not expensive, uh, $250 for each unit. They work really well for video. This is what I'm using them, I mean, why I'm using them in the studio for video. So you can use uh, simultaneously uh, with the uh, video production if needed. And uh, overall, they relatively good quality. But this is the least expensive. The best way is to go with aperture, aperture lighting. Uh, I don't have it right now with me, but we have few in the studio. They just great build quality and overall quality lighting uh, systems uh, that are probably one of the best for the money you can buy. Okay, so about lighting. Anything will work. I was using Broncolor, the most expensive studio lighting, but it doesn't make any difference what kind of lighting you are using. The idea is to understand and know how to use that light. Now, with all these years of experience, I can use almost any light. I can use the tabletop lamp and make some do-it-yourself salt box for it and do the same thing that I showed you in the course with brown colors. I can do the same with just a tabletop lamp. Because it's all about how to modify that light, how to draw the reflection, refraction, everything that comes from the subject to the camera, how to create it with light, that picture. And the light itself plays very little role. It's about all light modification. So let's talk about light modifiers. How we modify the light. Of course, the king for us, it's a strip box. Not even soft box, but a strip box. The narrow, narrow soft box. For product photography, I use 90% of the time strip boxes. Only strip boxes. No square boxes, no octa, no beauty dish. It all comes great when you shoot people. But in product photography, strip box is probably the best ever light modifiers in terms of soft boxes, type of soft boxes. And of course, you will see on the course that we almost never use directly strip box to highlight the subject. We place some sort of diffuser between the strip box and the subject. This is another king of a product photographer, is a diffuser. And diffuser, basically, it's a semi-transparent material that diffuses the light. I was using my big fan of do-it-yourself stuff, you know, and this one of those diffusers, do-it-myself diffusers, made from the scream, metal scream frame that I buy. This is not what I made myself. But then I just cut the piece of savage plastic and fix it on the screen frame using this white uh, gaffer tape. White because I need white reflection from it. And it works just perfectly for many, many shots in this course. The beauty that it has this special grip head that connects to any stands and you can rotate, you can do whatever. Ooh, looks like it's paint coming off, which is okay. So this little grip head is what you connect to the screen frame on one side, okay? And you connect it to the stand with another 
side. And then, voila, you can do whatever you want. This is one of the things, right? Another thing that I was using is professionally made, professionally made diffuser, this one. Uh, this is the huge one, <laughs> well, you won't even see the whole thing, uh, but uh, the link is under this uh, lesson. This is a Westcott, Westcott diffuser, big diffuser with silk. Uh, I think it's one f-stop diffuser. It's great. I prefer, I still prefer Savage Translant plastic, heavy weight Translant plastic uh, for diffusers. Again, all the links under this video, just uh, go there and uh, pick up whatever you want. What else you need to have for this course for, uh, to do the similar things? Reflectors, okay? Reflector, basically, it's any surface, preferably white or black, that you use to bounce off the light, or in, in case it's black, uh, to bounce off nothing, to just block light from somewhere else, from coming to the shooting subject. And this is the cardboard that I use. This is a foam core board, foam core board, that one side is black, one side is white. It's a beautiful reflector. You can cut it, it costs nothing, and I use it uh, many times in my photography uh, as a reflector. Of course, there are sil silver reflectors, uh, collapsible, let's say, reflectors, or white, uh, again, like West Coast, West Coast uh, reflectors, that you may already have, and it may be working as well as this one. Not a problem, I also have them, but those are made for like for the fixed size, right? You can't, I mean, you can cut it, but you're not going to cut that expensive reflector, right? And while it works okay, I really like cardboard, the uh, foam core boards, because they cost nothing and I can cut it uh, the way that I want. You will see on the course why it's important. I was using some special shaped cardboard to get an interesting reflection the way that I want. I couldn't use uh, any uh, pre-made uh, reflectors for this because they're just too expensive. There is no reason to cut them and they're usually just a frame, a wired frame with uh, silk in it, right? Or some other material, you can't cut it. So this is uh, another thing that you need. And the last thing, the software, uh, I should tether it. I always should tether it. You understand that I project things to the TV, basically use live view to see immediately before I start even clicking uh, what is going on in front of the camera. But to see after the click, I use the computer screen. I never rely on the little screen on the camera because you cannot see details, you can see many things. And I connect the camera through USB cable to Mac in my case, and I'm using Capture One Pro. Capture One Pro, I think it is the best uh, tethered solution, the software uh, for commercial, for product photographers. Uh, Lightroom will work, I think, because Lightroom has the same thing, but I don't like Lightroom. It's too slow and, uh, well, at least the previous version didn't work well for me, so I just gave up. Maybe, maybe, maybe they're good, I don't know. But for sure, pick up any software that will work with your camera, tethered, meaning that after each click you will see the image and you can open it 100%. You can tweak the color if you need or brightness on the computer. It can be built in application, for example, with Canon. There is Canon uh, with Sony, it's Sony memories and not all of them really good. Like I said, Capture One I consider the best, uh, but use anything you have and learn how to shoot tether it. It's a great way to control what is going on, what you're actually getting after every click. I think that's it for light modifiers. Now, what else you may need? Of course, all sorts of clamps like this is a great deal to have. Then you will need some surface that you're gonna place your subjects, your bottles. And I was using black plexiglass. You see that it has even protective cover on another side. Uh, this is very little pieces, 
you can buy it on Amazon, almost on any store they sell it. Uh, I'm buying it on a local plastic store uh, for very little. I think it's less than a dollar, one thing, because it's like a scrap. I mean, the, uh, something that they just almost giving away. Uh, they sell black, clear, or white like this, white glossy plexiglass, good thing. And this is how we fix it on the stand using this is the female wall plate. It's called female wall plate from Avenger. There are different uh, brands probably, but the idea is these things go on top of the stand and you can put on this plate anything that you want. What I'm using, I'm using the double-sided scotch pads. Uh, I can pull them without not a, without problem, uh, because it's removable, but it's really sticky. I mean, it, it holds, I can put whatever I want, and it holds really well. So this is how I put my bottles on, okay? Then, of course, you may need, it's better to have, it's always better to have for any photographer, I hope you already have it, a color checker passport, or at least a gray card, gray card that will let you to set correct white balance, okay? I'm using this little color checker passport because it's small. When I shoot products, sometimes the product is really small and uh, well, it's, it's a good thing to, uh, to put in front of it to get correct color uh, reproduction. So this is uh, another thing. Then head for the tripod. You see, I'm using a huge heavy stand. It's called studio stand. It's not a tripod. It has some crazy head with, you know, rotating lever. Heavy duty, made for large cameras. But this is probably overkill for you if you just starting in product photography. What you need is to have heavy weight, better heavy weight, stand, camera, camera stand or tripod, uh, with some better to have geared head. Geared head, uh, this is what gear head is. Let me take this out. This is Manfrotto, one of the best, I think, uh, made geared heads. And what it does, it can change the rotate on each of three axes. You can rotate and it's geared. If you rotate just a little bit, it will move just a little bit. It's a beautiful thing. And it has quick release, which let photographer to move things fast if needed. And then fine tune like this. Really cool stuff. And that's heavy, it's big. And for product photographer, it's good when it's heavy and, and, and large. Then this, this is the NovaFlex slider, the basically focusing slider uh, that can do, can help you to do things like a focus stacking. You don't need this. I never use focus stacking for this course with wine. However, I use it just like a adapter for the Arca Swiss mount because this head has some proprietary Manfrotto mount which looks like this. It's huge, it's nice, but I don't need it for this little camera. On this little camera, I have this little mount, which is Arca Swiss. So what I'm using, I'm using the plate that connects to this head, and then here, here we go, Arca Swiss mount. I rarely use this slider, the rails, focusing rails, to focus with the camera. But if need, I can always fine tune my focus if I don't need to touch lens, or I can do focus stacking. So it's already there. But like I said, most of the case, and for this course, you don't need this, the focusing rails. No, you just need the head. Uh, and geared head, there are different geared head. There are less expensive, like f this is four or five Manfrotto, but there is a baby geared head that you may use with the same success, okay? Uh, what else? Uh, what else do you need? You may consider buying gloves. Uh, this is nitrile gloves. What good about them is that they, they doesn't have any 
uh, like a special powder, you know, that makes uh, latex not, not to be sticky inside. We don't need any powder. This comes without powder. And you need to use them if you want to touch your bottle, touch your subject, the glossy subject that you cleaned before uh, during the shot. Otherwise, you may leave the fingerprints and you may not see it immediately, but in post-production you definitely would see your fingerprints <laughs> on the glossy metal or glass or whatever it would be. So, gloss is a cool thing to use. Okay, so uh, this is it. Uh, this is what you need in general for the course. On the second part of this lesson, uh, I'm going to talk about how we prepare the wine bottles for the shot and uh, how we set up the camera. Okay, so uh, let's uh, go to next lesson.